So, next chapter. I think this could be, for many of you, the most important session, the most important tutorial of this entire series. Um, and it is all about the naming convention and the general use D structure. And the first thing that I can say is there is no true structure that you have to follow. So there are guidelines and you always have to keep it logical from uh, in, in some sense. But there nobody say that you have to name your objects in this way and you have to name your object that way. What I mean by that is when you create an object, so let us say we create a new object with the sub create. The biggest issue that I personally had and many artists that I know, they don't understand how artists um, choose the namings. So we all have seen previous tutorials and we all or many people like like myself thought that s s they they have the naming from someone else they they know exactly what to write into this um structure in, into 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 the uh, objects to have a working solution but this is not true what i mean by that exactly is you can name your objects like you want you can completely create your own structure so I will demonstrate this right now. So let us say we have a box right in here. It's just a box just to have some geometry. Uh, we will copy it with Alt and we will make a sphere. And we will also create a light and maybe a camera. And yeah, we all want to have it in one stream, in one USD file. So we use a merge. And the most important thing is that we have to make sure that our objects are first of all visible so that we can see something. So that's the light. I'll dial it up. So maybe we can create a distant light, a very bright distant light and rotate it a bit so that we see something. And this is our camera, we move it here. So right now we have all these objects right in here. What happens when our object has the same naming? So let us say we call this box and because we have copied it, this was also called box. So you see, one object is overwriting the other object. And this is probably the most important thing that you need to, to know. You can't have the same, uh, same naming twice in, in the entire structure. N doesn't matter if it's a shader, a shader description, or an object itself. You have to make sure that every naming is unique. Keep in mind, USD is essentially a database structure. And in a database, like you maybe know from HTML, you can't have two variables with the same name. This will not work. So, um, this was the original box and this is our box, which is not a box. So this is a sphere and you will see the original object has come back because there's no conflict anymore. There is another situation that I often have problems with myself. So let us say you want to have an object. This is our hero box and you want to have a duplicate of it. You have an entire stream doing something else, adding shaders and you want to have a duplicate. So when you would do this, so like in SOPS, you will have a problem because the original box is going away because there's a conflict in the object itself. What you can do is you can create a duplicate or you should create a duplicate. 
And in this duplicate, um, we we should look what we what we basically add. So here we have our original box. It's now called box zero because it's the first instance. The other box, the original box from here gets hidden. So it's not visible anymore. It's not active. So we have now box zero and box one. So box one is probably here and we will drag and drop it to the primitives. This will make sure that on the left side, we can also force it that we have on the left side box zero and on the right side box one. And when we then merge it together, we will have two individual objects. So another um, heavy uh, important issue for myself was that I don't understand how I can yeah, create my own USD structure. And this is totally up to you. So I can say, I want to place this sphere, first of all, in a folder called geometry. And in this folder geometry, the sphere should be placed. So sphere. And when you look down the structure, you will see our sphere is probably moved to the component of geometry. So this is everything that you need to know. And what we can do um, too is we can change our entire structure, let us say, with the light. And we will plug it in here. Oh, my bad. And we will plug it in here. And of course, lights have their own lights folder structure. That's a default value. This is much easier to read for many artists. So usually you don't change that because lights are lights. But what if you have a light from a car or a machine? So you can call it machine light, machine lights, underscore machine lights. So what you see right now is we have now a new group, which is machine lights. So when we um, go over to the merge, we see that our machine lights are separated, separated from our geometry. But what we also can do is we can put this light into the same structure as this sphere or machine. So what we can do is we can maybe rename this as machine. So we have the machine with the sphere geometry and we now want to store the machine lights underneath the machine itself. So the only thing that we have to do is we copy and paste this name right in here and put it in front of the machine lights. Of course, only one of these backslashes. And now you see we have the sphere, our machine, and the machine lights grouped under the machine. So when it comes to changes of objects, so let us say we have, oh, that's bad. So let us say this is our hero box right now, and we want to change some specific, more specific details of the object itself. What we can do is we can not just place it right here, we can drop down a layer break. The layer break will cut all um, reference to the object before and create basically a new uh, uh, active sublayer. So, and what we can do now is we can use a sub modify to change our mesh itself. So as you can see, we have now a new sub layer. When we dive down, we see our original position because it's not moved so far. 
so it's right here we go into the sub create and we can either work with the usd file itself or we can um yeah unpack the usd to polygons we can use the unpack to polygons so that we have our polygons back our entire naming structure you should not delete those naming path and usd path attributes it's highly important don't delete them as well as not the usd x form so but what we can do now is we can work like in subs again we can change our mesh like like we want when we go up you see we have here an iteration of our first object and this is the most important issue it will not work that way so you have to make sure that you see how those layers get overwritten or not so what we can do here is we can help by duplicating it before this happens so as you can see the system gets irritated and this is only because of the naming of the uh, primitive attributes so here we have box 0 and bo box box 1 the first original one is deactivated this is our box 0 and here we have to change box 1 so that's box 1 and here we ha also have box 1 and now you see the object is now again the same what i what i show you with that simple example is that you always have to make sure that your naming convention is exactly right there's you you cannot when you have any problem with objects and so on first of all check the namings in every operation that you do so not just in a transform or a subgrade but as well as in any other operation that you can do right here that's probably the most important thing in this entire usd context system or in this entire usd um, pipeline and it was for it, it was horrible for me in the first place because I don't get this how do they get their namings and how do they name their um, assets where are they taking those names and it's very simple so I hope this small session here will help you to to understand that in the end everything is just a database in text form where every variable have to be unique so see you in the next chapter